there's been a fresh Ebola outbreak in Central Africa. At least 58 cases have been confirmed in the Democratic Republic of Congo. 27 people have been killed by the virus already, and nine neighbouring countries have been put on alert. It was only in 2014 that West Africa was ravaged by the deadly disease. Quarantine, unmarked graves, more than 11,000 dead. It started with a few isolated cases and turned into a pandemic. It took two years to declare Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone Ebola-free. And now 4,000 kilometers away in Central Africa, governments, health organizations and NGOs are on alert again, hoping to avoid the mistakes of last time and get the outbreak under control. Will the Ebola nightmare repeat itself? Hi, this is So What, where we look at stories from around the world that you should know about. Like and subscribe to keep getting more videos like this one. And leave a comment below if you have a story that you want covered. Now today, we are talking about one of the world's deadliest viruses. Ebola is back in the news and is causing concerns in Africa again. So far, 27 people have been killed in the Democratic Republic of Congo, also known as the DRC. And some health organizations fear the disease could spread to new cities and neighboring countries. It's left a lot of people scared. But to get why, you have to understand more about the disease itself and Africa's recent history. So what makes Ebola so dangerous? It's a highly contagious disease that works fast and can kill. To explain a little bit more, here's Dr. Exel Ronce, an emergency coordinator who's dealing with this current outbreak. Then it's a disease that it transmits from, uh, uh, initially the virus lives in um, animals like bats, and uh, unfortunately, at one point, you can have uh, these uh, bats coming in uh, in contact with human. It can be uh, or with uh, other uh, uh, monkey or something like that. And as soon as it reaches a human person, this virus uh, becomes uh, something lethal. Uh. Now, it can be tricky to tell if you've got Ebola in the first place. Symptoms can take up to three weeks to appear. And when they do, it can feel as though you've just got the flu. You'll have a fever, a headache and a sore throat. Then things get more extreme, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding, and then the worst can happen. The way of this disease is transmitted from one person to another one is through the fluid of the patient. Then it means through the blood, the urine, the sweat of the patient. And then it's what is really difficult regarding this disease. It means that the, the ones that you will infect are the ones that try to take care of you, your family, the health worker. So who should be concerned? After what happened last time, you might be thinking, what's the likelihood of another outbreak? It is important, though, to keep perspective. The DRC is a country of 78 million, but there have been less than 60 cases there. The disease was actually discovered in the country on the Ebola River in 1976. They've had nine outbreaks of the disease since, but most only affect a relatively small group of people in rural parts of the country. The DRC actually had another outbreak 10 months ago, and it didn't spread beyond some small villages. Uh, in few days, because the people, they die so fast, in few days it could be controlled because the people, they cannot go really, really far and transmit the disease somewhere else. And usually we had that in Congo, it's in a remote place and, and it can go, I would say, fast to control it. This time though, there was one major difference. It's had four confirmed Ebola cases in one of its cities, Mbandaka, and that's setting off alarm bells. But now the fact that it reached a, a big city with a lot of uh, population, uh, the fear is there. The way the people will be in contact with more people and then due to that, the, the spread of the disease can go faster. Now it doesn't sound that serious. Four people infected, that should be easy to contain, right? The problem is, is that Ebola is easy to spread. Mbandaka is home to 1.2 million people living in close and cramped conditions with poor sanitation and sporadic electricity. On top of that, the city is also a major transport hub with people visiting not just from Africa, but from all over the world. It's also only an hour's flight away from the country's capital, Kinshasa, which is 10 times the size of Mandaka. If the Ebola spreads to the capital, it will be way more difficult to control and the outbreak could be far more serious. So what's different about this outbreak? In 2014, government and international response to the outbreak was very slow. 
It took three months for the full scale of the crisis to be admitted publicly and for the World Health Organization to start putting a comprehensive plan into practice, which took two years to bring under control. And it cost more than $3 billion. It's true that uh, three, four years ago, we raised the alarm. We were afraid uh, we, the fear was that it was, it was reaching a uh, place where it was unusual, people didn't know nothing about the disease and, uh, and it, was, uh, it was reaching some uh, main city and we raised the thing and nobody answered on time. This time round, health organisations reckon the response has already been much quicker. People are being vaccinated already. 8,000 doses of a new experimental vaccine has arrived in Bandaka, with another 8,000 reportedly on the way. This medicine was used to treat infected people in 2016, and it was pretty successful. The key to stopping an outbreak is finding patient zero, the first person to get sick with this strain of the disease. That means identifying anyone who has come into contact with the latest form of the virus. So far, that's about 650 people. The DRC's government has said all healthcare will be free, and the World Health Organization has already had meetings about the risks to other countries. This time, I have to, to be honest, it seems that the international uh, reaction was quite heavy. As soon as the case were confirmed, we had uh, a general uh, big... Uh, yeah, a lot of people were coming to and answering to the... To the uh, we didn't have to call, they come by themselves. People are more uh, aware uh, and uh, afraid of this than it was when it was in, South, in uh, West Africa. And I don't think that we will reach this uh, stage anymore. This time around, the response seems to be much better organised. And both the DRC's government and the World Health Organisation have been praised for their response. The country has dealt with Ebola before. That experience and West Africa's experience in 2014 could be crucial in avoiding another pandemic.